students is for grade 12. They're going to bring students with them. And they're going to go through the whole session. So it's going to last pretty much right up until lunchtime there. And then after they're done, what they want to do is anybody who wants it, you don't have to. But if you want to sit down with them and take a look at your medication list, uh, which is a really good thing to do, you should do this. Every time you get a new medication, you should sit down with the pharmacist. They'll, they'll kind of explain more about this uh, in their session. But if they'll just sit down and review your medications with you, they'll, they'll answer any questions you have. If you've got a big bag of medications you want them to kind of organize, they'll help you make a list. Um, but I'm going to pass around the sign-up sheet if you would like to do that with them. But that's going to go on during lunchtime. We're going to have to like send people out one at a time. It'll be one-on-one. -on -one. It'll be we'll have a separate space for you to do that, so you're not going to be doing it in front of anybody else. Um, but I'm just going to while I'm talking, I'm going to pass around this sign-up sheet. If you're interested, just put your name down. That would be fine. We can do ours together, right? Sure. Yeah. yeah. I did my list. Oh, perfect. Um. Okay. So that's that. Yes, and then, let's see the thing. So after that, we're going to be on the 14th. So that's the following Monday. So pharmacy okay. seven. Do you want to sign the, up? The 14th will be our last session. Okay. So we're going to have our physical therapist come back. That is Kalima, and he's going to possibly take us outside if it's nice enough. And we're going to talk about how to get up and down curves, how to navigate the parking lot. Um, Bonnie asked if we can review getting up off the floor. If you think the fall, so we'll do that. Um, but that'll be our last session. Okay? Yeah, sounds good. Oh, March. Yeah, March 14th will be our last session. Thank you, Annie. All right. Do we have any questions before we get started? Okay, so real quick, I want to talk about our home hazard checklist that you guys filled out from two weeks ago. Did you guys notice anything in your homes you want to talk about, or do you think everything is a-okay? Kathy was saying she doesn't have any carpets, so that's good. All the stuff in my bedroom. They have a top in my bedroom. Okay. So is there anything you saw that was concerning? No? Okay. Thank you. All right. You've got it. Well prepared. <laughs> about right. animals. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Animals are A lot of my friends trip over their dogs. Yep. Mm -hmm. end up in a hospital. Yeah, that's a pretty common problem. A common problem is what with animals? Tripping over animals. Oh, so. Well, that's one thing I don't know. Yeah. 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 Check that kit. Uh -huh. oh. do, 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 do they walk in front of you or in front of I always make it feel deep in this part of me. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah. Really, you just have to slow down and be as careful as you possibly can, which is kind of what we talked about all throughout stepping on, just slowing down in general. Uh, but especially with animals, because you don't know what they're going to do. You have to be extra careful. All right, so let's kick things off with our exercises, guys. So is everything going OK with the exercises? Are we doing them every day? <laughs> yeah. I forget what they are. I like the honesty. <laughs> they should be in your book. Yeah, do you still have the book? Probably. Okay. Forget <laughs> where that is, Joe. <laughs> okay, well, I can give you another one if you want. <laughs> Thank you. Because <laughs> um, remember, this is the most important part of this class. You really got to work at this. You want to reduce these falls. <laughs> All right. <coughs> so, um, Bonnie, since you're, I think you're our only new one here, so um, if you just want to take it easy, you don't have to keep up with the rest of us. If you even just want to watch for today, yeah. you can do that, but if you feel comfortable jumping in, you go right ahead. We're going to be skipping a couple, too. We're not going to do our moving around ones, like the side steps or the um, tandem walking, because there's not enough space in here to keep it safe. Um, all right. 
So let's start with our sit to stands here. Tippy toes as high as we can. 
keep him holding on to that chair. All right, we're going for 10 here. Ready? And one, two, good, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. All right, relax. Next up, we're going to do our toe raises. So this one, we're picking our toes up and setting them back down while keeping everything else nice and straight. So you're not moving anything but your toes. All right, ready? And one. Good job. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven, eight, nine, and ten. All right, relax. Let's go ahead and sit down for our last one. So let's kick out our right leg first. We're going to hold for a second. Keep the toes pointed to the ceiling and relax. Same thing on the left. Extend and hold and relax. Keep those toes flexed to the ceiling. Check the right side. Good. And the left side. Good. And the right. And the left. And the right side. And the left. And the right. And the left. We'll do one more on each side. On the right. And the left. All right, relax. Okay. <laughs> Let's do some neck rolls. Yeah. 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 Try, try to tilt them up and down. That works. Really slow. Oh, yeah. Freaky crack. <laughs> <laughs> Bonnie, how do you feel about those exercises? Okay. So, when you're first starting out with those, Okay. You want to, you want them to be easy. You kind of want to get them warm down. So if you're feeling comfortable, you can try doing some more when you're trying, doing them on your own. So how often do we do our balance exercises? Every day. Every day, Every day right, guys? <laughs> I don't want to get young. Yeah. 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 But yeah, they can look at when you put on the So the next thing you do oh, okay. is that kind of you start trying more, oh, okay. then you can start okay. trying to add some weights. And um, if you're here next week, I can talk to you a little bit more about that. Um, but you kind of use this first week just as a getting the form down. And then the habit. Remember, I talked about getting the habit down is the most important part, and I think we might be struggling with that a little bit. So, guys, let's let's kind of reiterate why do we why do we exercise? Why are you so important? Yeah, keep fit, huh? Keep strong, keep moving. That's good for your good for your heart. It makes you happy. But to make me happy? No, we don't want to do it for that. <laughs> Why else? Although it does. <laughs> Improve our balance so it helps reduce falls. Anything else? Yes, so you can play pickleball. So you can go grocery shopping. So you can take a walk in the park. 
It's to keep you independent and to keep you doing the things that you like to do. Even though it's not very fun sometimes. Yeah, that's fun. It's a little bit of a chore, but we do it for those reasons. All right, so just remember that. Okay, so what we're going to talk about today is vision and how that impacts your balance. And then we're also going to talk about footwear. Okay? Um, so I'm going to pass out, I've got some handouts on the vision. I'm going to pass that out, and then we're going to go through it all together. So um, and this is another PowerPoint that I'm going to take back. So if you guys uh, just wouldn't mind not writing on it, I would appreciate that. Does everyone in here wear glasses? Does everyone not wear glasses? Mm -hmm. <laughs> everybody. I have for a long time. So, like I said, that vision is one of the three down senses, so it makes sense. 
that people with poor vision are more likely to fall than those with good vision. So if you have good sight, you're all set with that. Um, lots of people who have vision problems generally just need glasses. So once you get the glasses, you're probably you're probably all right. Glasses or contacts or any sort of corrective vision device. Yeah. Uh, so falls are the second leading cause of accidental deaths after road traffic accidents worldwide, which is kind of crazy. Um, visual function unavoidably deteriorates with age, and the deterioration of visual function in turn increases fall risk. Makes sense? So it'll deteriorate in a couple different ways, and we'll talk we'll talk about that. All right. So then in the last bullet says falls are preventable. So that's why we talk about everything we do. And stepping on, and we kind of, it might seem like we're repeating and repeating, but if you have anything that you can't control, there's things you can't control, like your vision, or if you have neuropathy and you can't feel your feet, those things you can't control very well. So that's why we talk about the things we can control, like slowing down and walking heel to toe and making your house cleaner, making sure there's not things on the floor and cords running across the floor. So that's why I'm talking about the things you can control so much. I noticed that the water. All right, so let's flip to the next page, vision difficulties and falling. <coughs> so when it said vision deteriorates as you age, this can happen in a couple different ways. Um, and it, it might not be that serious. Some people don't need glasses until they're way, way later in life, yeah, or just for reading. Um, so there's a couple different ways that vision can kind of get reduced. So poor visual acuity, that could mean you just don't see things as clearly as you once did. An impaired ability to see contrast sensitivity. Field of the vision changes, so that means it's like nearsighted and farsighted. Reduced depth perception, so like if you're going down stairs, you might not be able to tell how how far the step is, for example. Makes sense. You could have reduced uh, uh, impaired dark adaptation, so your eyes don't adjust to the darkness as well, or any change in lighting. So like if you're going outside from a dark room. It's a bright sunny day out, and you know, you're kind of blinded for a second. And then the opposite is true as well. If you're coming inside from a really sunny day and it's a little bit dark, and just stand there for a second, let your eyes adjust. Um, the lights just <laughs> just so everybody knows. <laughs> I feel like that happens every time I fell. That's why my glasses feel okay right now. But if I'm outside for a while, they get dark. Okay. And it says I come out here and say that. Neat. That's why I don't have my glasses. And it's like this. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. But they're making things that you can't really put your neck and go on the boat. Yeah. Yeah. Or walk in the boat like I do. This is the floater. Ow. Oh, no. <laughs> yes, everybody here is older than 50, but at age 50, my eyeballs changed. I wore glasses for distance for my kid. And at 50, for some reason, I started to see again, so. No more glasses. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. So, eyeballs change. The shape of your eyeball changes as you age. Another point. <laughs> eyeballs change after you age. Right. <laughs> That's definitely you don't want to get cataracts right Yeah, so let's go to the next page here. We're going we're gonna to talk about cataracts. I thought we were That's fogging or on a hot day when you're sweating and your glasses fog. Oh yeah. I yeah, the fog. I had a big active thyroid in mine, it fogged up all the time. Oh wow. 
kind of like the only way to stop the party is to take the glasses off for a while. There you go. Right. Yeah. Tell me about it. Yeah. I hate it when I And then these masks that you have to wear. Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So, cataracts are one of those things that. As you get old, the older you get, the more likely you are to get a cataract. So who's had a cataract? I did. Not. Is anyone in the process of getting one? Okay. I, I, have, I have them. Okay. I have them. My doctor told me that. As long as they don't bother me. Yeah, usually they'll wait. That's that's the, that's the tough part of a cataract. You have to wait a while before they can take them out. Oh, yeah. Luckily, it's a pretty easy procedure to get done. So once yeah. they get it, it's I was trying. You have to sleep in there for a while. Yeah, not too bad. Decide to sleep and decide to work on it for a I haven't heard any horror stories about cataract removal, so that's good. Mm -hmm. All right, let's flip to the next page. Oh, by the way, a yeah. lot of times cattle rights is brought over medications to you. Oh, really? I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I'm sorry, you said what? Cattle rights can be brought from medication to you. Oh, really? That's interesting. You'll have to ask, do you know which ones? <laughs> no, I, 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 I don't remember. I don't remember. Okay. <laughs> we'll have to ask the pharmacist next week which medications uh, bring on cataracts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we will stop <laughs> that. And I and he says, medications. Wow. I didn't know you had to say it. You go to the eye doctor. They'll tell you. The eye yeah. doctor will tell you. I get new glasses every year. Without my hair, this is. I have cataracts. I've been wearing glasses since I was born. I mean, if you were there, you were cold. But that's what I'm telling you. Hey, Dave, I, I was wiping like mine, and the doctor told me I could be a while, but I was doing the eye chart. The first couple of letters, the smaller ones, I was having terrible trouble with it. So that's what the case I was cataracts. Because you're a, a, a good way to hold you need the surgery, but I guess I'll get cloudy vision with those kind of small letters. I mean, that's pretty much symbolic of yeah. being a cataract. Well, well, I have, I have two symptoms. I have my, 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 Kind of luck of the draw. That's a, it's a genetic thing. You should read it. Yeah, my brother needs glasses. I don't. So it's just a genetic. Yeah. Oh. Um. All right, so the next one we're going to look at is age-related macular degeneration. So if you can see, that these are kind of extreme examples yes. that we have here, like really extreme. Uh, but this affects the center of your vision. So you can sort of see around the peripherals. So you'll see people turning their heads maybe and looking out of the side of their eye if they have this, and if it's severe enough. Usually it's a, little, it's a lot smaller than what you see here. Uh, but it does affect the center of your vision. Anybody have that? No. Nope. Okay. Evelyn does. Okay. Is yours that serious or do Okay. So usually a change in graph glass prescription. Helps with it. Okay. Yeah, that makes. What do they do? They give you drops for that, Evelyn, or do they do shots? I'll take the kid shot. I that kid five. Okay. So you can do shots or eye or eye drops for that one. Yeah. I'm not sure. I think if they have a wet one or a dry one. Yes. Works. Than the other. My yes. dad had it. Yeah, but he had the one that fits the peripheral vision. 
Um, so your environment. So the first one's about lighting. Oh, okay. The next one, this this slide's about your environment. So uh, what did I say in the beginning? We talked about slowing down and looking around as much as you can. So you should have maximum visibility in your environment. You should be able to just have clear pathways. You shouldn't have to be kind of shuffling around things or kicking things out of your way. You want to have things nice and clear and nothing on the floor. How about clothes? Clothes should be picked up. <laughs> Don't throw your clothes on the floor. You come to my house and talk to my grandson. You don't about that. All right. You can't even talk in this bedroom. Got clothes in there. Throw them out. Don't go in. Yeah, don't go in. I don't in. I don't. What? Um, casters on furniture. So the little wheels that are on furniture, they need to move around. Like sometimes they stick out. So make sure those are turned in. Sounds good. Allowing your eyes to adjust the light. So like I said, if you're going to a, a room or if you're going outside that has a big change in light, just stop for a second and let your eyes adjust. Try not to keep walking when you're blinded. I can't even see in the sunshine. Yeah. I know. Get your sunglasses handy too. Make sure they're always with you. Be careful of pets. Like we talked about earlier. And their toys. Yes, and their toys. Dog toys. He has a little toy box, and he, when I'm not home, he spreads them everywhere. I'm thinking of you. Um, so if, you're, if you know you're going to be kind of rushing around your house, or like if you're cleaning up, or if you have guests coming, or something like that, and you're hurrying, and you're not paying as much attention as you're normally able to, uh, it might be a good idea to just put them away for a little bit of time. You know, put them in a room where they're not going to be underfoot. Um, but the rest of the time, just be slow and and careful. <coughs> Scanning ahead for hazards when you're walking. So. When you're walking, you don't want to be looking straight down at the ground as much, but you want to try to scan about a car's length ahead of you. So that way you're seeing anything that might be an issue. This could be different if you have vision issues that prevent you from seeing that far ahead. So it might be a little closer for you um, if that's the case. But scanning, scanning kind of the distance in front of you, and then you'll see things. You'll see that crack in the sidewalk, or that tree, tree, tree that's sticking up, or that dog toy on the floor. Um, that'll help a lot. And then you want to clean up spills right away. So that goes without saying. Um, that could cause a hazard. Using color contrast and safety strips to highlight step edges and changes in level. So I actually brought an example of that with me. Um, so if you're having trouble with seeing stairs or changes in levels, they make all sorts of non-slip tape. So this is kind of that sandpapery texture. You can stick them down. Uh, a lot of them are made for, this is made for indoor and outdoor use, so you can, you can put this outside. Um, so this is nice. Then they also make different color tape if the, if the coloring is a problem with the stairs. They make, this is glow in the dark actually, so that could come in handy for nighttime. Does, does the light have to be on a full time in order for that to work on or Does it if, work on the day and then glow at night? It's probably, it works at night. So I don't know if it needs to kind of like charge up, oh, yeah. but the overhead light might be enough to charge this up. People love the people love I was just talking about this last night. We have some porch steps, and when we, where we park our car, it really has to be. I was thinking I could move the sensor light. Oh yeah. yeah. But yeah. that would be a lot easier and a lot more convenient. I just put it down right now. Yeah. If it's really low, we got a light switch. Yeah, it should, especially if it's outside, it should, it should glow in the night, the night time. Yeah. All right. Um, I brought a couple other things, too, I'm going to talk about, but I didn't have last time. I wanted to cover. Let me finish this first. 
Alright, and then the last, well not the last one, almost the last phase. So, eye health preventative tips. So this is the other part that you're in full control of, is taking care of yourself. So, your eyes are a part of your body, so if you're taking care of your body, your eyes are going to be healthier as well. So some things you can do are not, not smoke, <laughs> controlling your blood pressure, managing your diabetes, staying active, so these exercises, believe it or not, will help your eyes stay healthy, using sunglasses, and then making sure you're keeping up with your eye doctor every year to get the eyes checked. What if you lose a Oh. That affects you. Yeah, I know it does. Yeah. Get rid of the people. <laughs> that would be a best option. Not that easy, though. It's not, it's not easy. No. Yeah. They know I don't like them. They do, but it's still. Not a mile, they don't. They smoke on the porch. They smoke after a room. It doesn't matter. They can smoke outside. They smell on the furniture, and you can smell on the furniture. Yeah. I got the same problem. Yeah. 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 I know we got a nice shape on quarantine, so it's like All right, so if a lot of people smoke, can't you get lung cancer behind the smoke? Yeah. It does. Second yeah. hand smoke. I mean, all that you don't smoke? Yeah, second hand smoke, yeah. yep. It affects you a lot. Yeah. Not good. Yeah. All right, guys. So, um, the last, I keep saying the last slide. I don't think this is the last one either. No, it's not. <laughs> this, this is. Um, so, bifocals. So, um, bifocals are, they're, they're great. So the only thing you want to be cautious of is, especially if you get a new prescription, or if you're just getting bifocals, you just want to be really careful with them walking around. And especially going up and down stairs or curbs or anywhere you have to step up or down. Because um, they can make it a little a little tough to see the changes in the depth of the stairs. So some people, it's they actually take their glasses off to go up and down stairs. Um, but other people are totally fine with it. They're used to their bifocals. So that is an individual thing. You just want to be extra aware of that. So just keep that in the back of your mind if you, if you have bifocals or if you're getting them. I first got my bicycle and went and stuck it like it was up this high. Yeah. And I went to step like it fell. Mm -hmm. So you have to really adjust your eyes. Because mm -hmm. you know, you know, that's what the doctor told me. I didn't know about my eyes. Yeah. Yeah. So he said, the best thing to do is walk and walk and look straight up. Yeah. 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 I like hurt myself. <clears throat> so you have to adjust your eyes and like the right down on this part of the glass. Yeah. So yeah, it definitely affects just that step up and down. So just to be just to make sure you're aware of that. Alrighty. The actual last slide. So we know there's a link between vision and balance. We covered that. Um, and then, so when we, when, we, when we have one of our balance senses affected, what do the other senses have to do? Take over. Right, they have to work a lot harder to kind of make up for that, that lowering of that one sense. So that's why, why these balance and strengthening exercises are so important. Because when we strengthen our body, it's going to be much more effective in preventing falls. So you're going to be stronger, you're going to be quicker in catching yourself, um, and a lot more stable. Alright, so working on these things we can control. Alright, so that's it for vision and balance. Oh, sorry. Oh, vision and balance. Oh, James doesn't have a 
probably in the house. Okay. Like, look at the beach. Yeah, yeah. It's a big open expansive area to grab the cart from the wall. Yeah. And the same thing for the store. So it's yeah. like it's a big open area. We're having a fixation point out yeah. for. Or no, it's worse. Do you I, guess, feel, I guess a fixation point, you might walk across the driveway yeah. and get hit by a car. Do you feel dizzy? Well, no, it's like an open no, area. It's totally off yeah, so grab the cart and we'll walk together. And the same thing in a big store. But in the house, I don't think she has a down problem. It's just an open, yeah. expensive area. Part of it is because there's so much more uh, feedback coming in. So your brain is overstimulated too. So it makes it harder for your, for your eyes to kind of do what they need to. Um, hanging on to the cart and holding on to, to the cart is your best. Is your best. Yeah, I don't know. I don't remember saying in the house. I don't think she ever has a physical problem. Yeah. I think a balance problem. Is yeah. When you get out of the car, she'll say, "Let me grab the cart and I'll hold it." Which I understand. But it seems like it's when you get into the big open area. Yeah. Or like yeah. fixation yeah. point or having blinders on. Not. I'm just. I just got stuck. But I'm just no, saying. Because when I walk, like I feel like yeah. the way I walk. Yeah. yeah. No, it's it totally is just the extra input. So the vision is probably the thing that's being affected because nothing else is changing. You're still having the same feedback your feet, sure. your inner ear is the same. So it's the vision that's the only thing that's different. Right. So in, in familiar spaces, you know everything you're right. seeing and it's much less because it's a, it's a room. It's not like aisles and aisles and people moving around. And, so but once I hold on to a car, I, I walk straight through. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but with that, I'm, I'm all over the place. Yeah. So you can either, if you don't have the car, maybe you think about how many canes are walking in the <laughs> I'd rather do the car. Yeah. Just make sure you have that car then. Oh, yeah. It works fine. I'm just saying. Or if I hold on to the car, it's fine. Yeah. Like, it's fun, but in the big store, in the big open area, you're in a house open store environment, just cover it in. Yeah, it's all the extra input. Sensory input. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm going to have to do more things. It's not the worst thing. It's the worst problem. Yeah, that'll help you hear that well. Yeah. And Dennis, Dennis is familiar with this. There's all sorts of uh, more balance exercises and things to do with it. Here, he kind of does physical therapy. I went for that. Okay. When this first happened to me. And it helped. And now it's just going back to being. But the balance used to like stay on. So you have to do it every day. Yeah. I was going to say, yeah. Yeah. It'll get better. I'll get more. Yeah, we'll get better. Right. Um, guys, you wanna? Well, let's take a couple minute break. Okay. Um, and then we'll get into the footwear. Footwear. Shoes. Footwear. Footwear. Oh yeah. What? I've got some cool things that I pulled from our assistant technology room that I wanted to kind of show you. Oh, okay. Um, so if you're getting it out of your car, does anyone have trouble getting out of your car and undo? You no. Know? Okay. You do. Not bad. Okay. So it's just hard to stand up. Um, so this is one of the things that I think is pretty interesting. Uh, it's, it's called a handy bar. This thing actually goes in your door, so when the door latches, oh, yeah, I see that. this hooks in. I have that. I see them on TV. And, oh, really? Okay. And then you, you, use the, you use this to kind of push down on the other car. Uh, and it also has like a... If you get stuck in the car, this breaks the window. And there's also a seatbelt cutter. Have you tried it? I haven't tried it. If you lock your car and you have to start the key in your car, I'm telling you. I call the locksmith first before I break my window. Alright. I'll be a little far just do. My husband will be able to find it. And then also, so remember when we talked about, you guys probably have seen these before, getting out of the tub, 
So, remember when we talked about how good grab bars are to have getting it out of the tub? Yeah, right. Um, and to be careful with those suction ones. This is another really good option. So this goes over the side of the tub and you screw it in so it's really easy to install. And then this is nice and sturdy to step it in and out of the tub with. Right, you did the wall water, could you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, these are pretty common. But in my sh shower, my shower, we have the dry balls. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's the one. That's the right. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, I'll have to go to the Oh, I also brought an example of the grab bars. Oh, yeah. You guys know what I'm talking about, but I brought one in to see. Yeah. see. Yeah. We know what you're talking about. And they particularly like this in the CRC room because it doesn't have the exposed screws that can get all rusty. That's all, all underneath this, the metal frame here. But, yeah. And then this is sort of related to footwear. Yeah, yeah. But does anyone have one of these for putting on socks? My brother has one. No, we don't have any of those. I don't need any. We must be able to bend. We have bend. Okay. Have you guys continue on? Have you guys seen these before? I have. Oh, you haven't seen this? So this is where if you have an injury or, or you throw your back out in a day, these are nice to have around. So you can put your sock on this, put your, foot so your in socks there. around this, and then you slip your foot in and you pull this handle so it comes up. Oh, yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, I'll see you. That was a nice sock. Yeah, so those are nice to have around. Alrighty. Alright, so let's talk about shoes. Okay, I got shoe stories. Sure. <laughs> okay, living in this area, flip flops are something everybody wears. Jim was just talking about that. Flip flops are awful to drive in because your foot will slide out of it. When you're trying to make a sudden decision, like if somebody cuts in front of you in a parking lot, you have to stop and put your foot on the brake. If that shoe slides off, you're going to hit the other car. Mm -hmm. Not only that, you're going to twist your ankle and everything else. And then another one. That's your story? No, it, it, it's just one. And then okay. another story about foot flops if you have, for any kind of shoe that has a, a, a you slide in mm -hmm. and your toes are exposed, mm -hmm. if you have to go out on your porch, I'll come to hit and here, I was carrying a tray of hamburgers to the grill the day this happened. And I have to go across the patio, which is a deck, a wooden deck, with slots about this wide apart. The toe part of my flip flop got somehow down in that gap, got, yeah, got caught up, and over I went. And it broke this bone right in half. Mm. That's a story. Whoa, yeah, whoa. I had to go to the emergency room. So I don't wear flip flops anymore. Okay. Yes, flip flops are terrible. Okay, so what makes it a good shoe? So if you guys want to turn to the handout that says what is a safe, comfortable shoe, I'm going to have another one of them. I have 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 one of them. They ordered one too. I wanted to go one of the other ones. They were shoes like this. I can't figure out how to even walk in them. Okay, so what do we need in a good shoe? We need to be supportive. So you want to have good arch support in your yep. shoe. Support. You want the sole to be flexible under the ball of your foot and not too thick. So some people like to wear what I call cinder block shoes. And they're like really rigid, heavy, no good. You want a shoe to move with your foot. Because when you walk heel to toe, it's not your heel comes down and then the rest of your foot slaps down with it. That's not what you want. You want it to roll with your foot. Okay, so nice and flexible. Well, how do you make it walk in the foot of some So now we can wear the toe shoe. On your tippy toes. <laughs> you know they're real high heels. 
Yeah. But the high heel boots there. You gotta walk in those tippy toes. The young gentleman, you know who is that? He still has shoes like that. Don't worry, man. You see all them ladies walk up in their high heel boots and everything. Yeah. Yeah, you're walking like this. Yeah, right. That's what I'm saying. That hurts their up and stay hurt their feet. Yeah, it does. No, it's gonna mess up the back, their legs, ankles, and everything. Oh, yeah. I mean, I used to like riding. I bet you when they get home, they take their shoes off. I bet you they say, damn, my feet are sore now. Yeah, that's No good. All right, so flexible shoe. Nice and flexible. You want to cover most of your foot. Okay? You want it to be lightweight, so it has no cinder block shoes that are inflexible and they don't roll with your foot when you're walking heel to toe. You want a roomy toe box, so not a shoe that comes to a point like this or squishes your toes together. Really, you want your toes to not even be touching. You want your toes to be spread out. And nobody's foot looks like that anymore. Because we are so used to wearing these shoes that squish your toes in all together. Um, but you want your toes to spread out as wide as you possibly can. You want the sun to have room to wiggle around. You must want some Uggs then. No, Uggs are bad. Good toe box, but the rest of them are bad. The rest of the components. Um, you want to have lace or Velcro, so either of those are fine. So some people can only use Velcro. That is totally fine. That's, that, that'll keep it tight enough. Or like a shoe that you slip on. You, you, but you have to be able to fasten it. Yeah, like a Velcro. Yeah. That's what I got. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. That's good. That's good. That's Yes. Yeah. They're not good shoes. I think we've covered that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They have a they have a comfortable pattern with it. Yeah. Alright, so with the fit, you want at least a half an inch between the longest toe and the inside of the shoe. So that's about a thumb. So you want about a thumbs width between <coughs> your toe and the end of the, the end of the shoe. You want your foot to be held well into the back of the shoe, so you don't want to be sliding around. You want it to be too roomy like that, and your heel should be snugly in the back. Okay. With the sole, you want a non-slip rubber sole. So. Um, they should kind of grab onto the ground, a reasonable amount. It should be textured from grip with a broken border. So, this is a good example of that. Um, the more random patterns on the bottom of your shoe, the better. So, and then at the edges, there's these little broken pieces, which is good. Any shoe like that. But this is a really good sole here. It is a good sole. Different pattern, really good. Nice. Yeah. Easy spirit. Good. Nice. Is a good shoe. Oh, I got Nike nice. too. Good shoe. I got Nike. Nice. Okay, so so the, that that's it for the sole. Now, what about the heel? Generally, you also want the heel to be non-slip and textured. You want it to be low enough, so lower than one to two inches. Two inches is kind of pushing it. You want it to be bevel, so what that means is it sticks out just slightly in the back. So slightly past your heel, see this kind of is a little bit farther than where your heel would be. It increases your base of support by a little bit. Then you also want it to be broad, so at least two inches wide. So you could have a heel that might be a little bit um, you could have a heel that's either this big, or you could have a heel that's this big. And you want to go with a heel that's this big versus a tiny one, because the width does matter. All right. So what I'm going to do next? Oh, Jim, did you have something? No, no, no. Okay. Just right. So what we're going to do next is 
I'm going to pass a shoe out to, I don't know if I have enough for everybody. I'm going to pass shoes out, and then we're going to go around and talk about what's good about them or what's not so good about them. Okay? All right. Let's see here. Actually, let's do this in pairs. We're going to do this in pairs. We're going to talk about it together. Hmm. Are these new shoes? <laughs> no, they're not new shoes. Oh, okay. They are clean though, we didn't say on that. It's something like shoe. Yeah. It's a good shoe. It's something like that. Personally, I like those loafers, but they're not good. You guys this one? Hi, You try Oh, the black guys. Oh, my God. 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 Oh, Oh, my God. Oh, I like that. Sure. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. 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 All right, Andy, I'm going to go give you this one. All right. Hey, where is it? Only when his girlfriend comes up. You got to have a picture of me? Yeah. I'm going to wear that to top sport. You got to be born with a girlfriend. I'm going to be right there. And I'm going to be right there. And I'm going to be right there. Okay, so there's no support here. But aren't they? Not at all. They don't have no art support. And I've never heard Guys, let's listen. And high as they are, it's not supporting your back. Right. So the heel is much too high. And then what about the width? Narrow, narrow. Way too narrow. What's that opportunity to you? I like Joe's shoe. That's very nice. They just poured it. We'll get there. We'll get there. Okay. I mean, and this cross the toe is not good high. Yes. So, and then it doesn't cover any of your foot. It just has this tiny little strap here and this tiny little strap here. Yeah. So the shoe looking. Yeah, you look good. I like it. Okay, you guys talk like this shoe. I like it. All right, who wants to go next? 
Alright, so go ahead. Ain't no support in this one. Okay, no support. No. It's got a large support right there. It's got a large support. It's got a little bit of support. Right here. Right there. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's got But it's the heel. It's the heel. Right. Heels too high and right. down there. That's right. It's a little step above the last one. Yep. But not too much. Right. <laughs> That's the right. The sole on it has the texture, but we didn't like the way that the heel was made. We didn't like the way it was wearing down around the edges. This person needs to buy it. Um, if you walk, it works. It doesn't concern me. She, she says that she doesn't like the way that this can catch on something. That's a good point. And it might trip you up. But it looks like this person wearing shoes on the lot. Aren't they those doctor shoes? It's really easy to know where I got the stretch. Those? Uh -huh. That's natural life. Yeah, that's natural life. Natural life. That's natural life. They're known for their full support. Yeah, well, yeah. that's a good shoe. That's a good shoe. But the only thing we found uh, negative about it is right there where it's yeah. or something. Because it's a little, comes to a point here. Yeah, that's but the heel and everything is good. What's wrong with it coming to a point? It just it's, see how it can stack on something. Yeah, it can stack on something. Lots of like steps or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good catch, guys. No one has ever said that about that one. Yeah, I totally agree. And then it's also so keep an eye on your shoes. But when the tread starts to wear down, you need to get a new one. Yep. That's what I did on my tennis shoes. All right, what's next? Okay. So I, I don't like this shoe. It's because it's kind of, not, this is what I have, but it's kind of like. It's tilted. It's tilted. It's yeah. 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 Roll your feet in or out, or some people have kind of pigeon toes and they walk with their toes in. Any kind of little things you have like that, your shoes are going to wear in that direction eventually. Yeah. I have so a catch keep it on. Like this, I just don't know when I was in the Yeah. You, but sometimes you can trip the uh, Yes. It'll slide these, on your foot. These are not great. And the other thing about these is they slip out. They slip out. They have not been coming no. back to heel, so that's not good. I can't wear those shoes like that. And then they also have this cushioning on the inside, which is comfy. But what does this do? Uh, yeah. Yeah. 
The squishiness does not allow your foot to really be able to work. Yes, exactly. Because it's soft and squishy, your feet aren't able to feel the ground as much. And this is almost this is almost the most important thing with shoes. So if you have something that's kind of reducing the feeling of the feet, you're kind of doing yourself a disservice because you're affecting that one balance sense. It's almost like wearing sunglasses inside, um, having this in your shoes. So this is not right. You want to be able to feel the ground as much as you can. All right, good, good, good. All right, what's next? You guys want to go next? This shoe is wonderful. There's, so what's good about it? It has good support. It has hard support. Good sole. Everything is wonderful. Good art Reebok did good. So the one thing about this shoe, guys, that I don't like is it too. Is it is super rigid. Right. Oh yeah. my god. Uh or this is you haven't worn it enough. Mine been I good. I mean, they look a little dirty to me. I don't know. Mine been good. My shoes are like that and my hair will put on grow my good brain. This is really box. So this shoe this shoe is great. The only thing is it is just not very flexible. So when you go to walk heel to toe, you're gonna be slapping the whole shoe down at the same time. Okay, well, it's, it's, it's pretty thick, so you're not going to be able to feel the ground as much either. So, kind of just keep an eye out for this. Um, I, I wouldn't particularly get this shoe. shoe. Okay. Yeah, Bonnie? For Christmas, my husband wanted me to buy him a pair of ping pong shoes. He wears, he, he, he's really in love. Okay, he's yeah. A league and all. I looked at him like he was crazy. Yeah, a ping pong shoe. What the heck is a ping pong shoe? Very we went to all the athletic shoe stores and they don't have them. I'm saying, why can't you just get an athletic shoe? He says there's a difference. It's the way it comes in contact with the floor, it flexes and stuff yeah, like that. I still thought it was crazy. There was such thing. Turns out there is such a thing. A ping pong yeah, shoe. He would we, know. We found them and he showed me the difference. He, he, he compared yeah. the soles. He showed me how. The different things that come in contact with the floor and flexes and stuff, so it does make a difference, guys. I'm um, just a good one. Well, it looks like a regular sneaker, only the soles and have a certain kind of rubber on the bottom. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That comes in contact with the wooden floors and the gym and stuff. Yeah. Interesting. I've never heard of that. I never heard. I never heard. I never heard. Yeah. But we went to the different, like, what's this one that has all kinds of game equipment? Shoes. REI? Yeah, and uh, yeah, American Eagle, like the sport, yeah. sporty goods and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, they created a big old yeah. sporty goods store, and they knew about them, so I knew I wasn't going crazy. Yeah. But they said they didn't carry them. So I went to like 10 or 12 stores before I found them. Track supply. And, and I probably did get them for him. You go to track supply. We went to track supply, yes, I did. We went everywhere. Yeah. Well, I thought he was crazy when he told me about it. I never yeah, found out about it. He said yeah. found it out through other people that play ping pong. Yep. He, he's in a league, you know. They're, they take it serious. I thought that was fine. They sell everything. <laughs> Apparently not ping pong shoes. All right, Jim and Jane, what do you have? Our, our shoe is pretty basic. It doesn't have either ties or Velcro. It's sort of a one size fits all. Has doesn't have much of a tread design. Yeah, doesn't have support. much just for either. Yep. Flat. Yeah, it's pretty much flat all over. Yeah. It doesn't have the bevel feel. Anybody here remember? They doesn't remember. Going to the store, you put your feet inside a machine to x-ray your head. They have one of those at Ernie Cal. They used to have a year when I was a kid. We used to, I should have cancer of feet. It was a model x ray. It was shaped the foot and the outline of the shoe. Really? Yeah. This is back to the 50s. Oh, that's interesting. And Barney oh, yeah. now has that foot expert up there, too. But there is a machine. You walked up as a kid, you'd be there feet, and you'd see your. Wow. Your, 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 the shoe, outline of the shoe. He's older than me. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> interesting. They got rid of me because it was a, a model x ray or something. Yeah. Here at Piper, all the department oh. stores back up there. It was a new thing. New technology. Now, this is back in the 50s. This was old technology. Oh, wow. All right, so if you can see this one, um, uh, this is pretty common. It just has a stretchy 
thing, but it don't have a lace or velcro or anything. This might be okay for a while. They just might wear out a little faster than lace or velcro. Um, so it's not the worst thing in the world, but just keep an eye on it. But yeah, this doesn't have much art support. It's totally flat. I would need shoes, but they're not support. All right, Andy, I think you're our last one over here. This shoe might have good support on the bottom, <laughs> and it is not to the high, but the rest of the shoe, everything is not Right. Not a good shoe to wear. Not good. So, so Andy has this shoe over here. If you guys can see, the heel is kind of on the verge of being too high. And it's definitely too narrow. So that's not good. There's nothing to keep your foot in the back. There's no Velcro. There's no ties. There's no art support. Um, it does not cover most of your foot. So this is not a good show. That's right. And I think this is our last one. Are there any more shoes out there? Okay. So. So you guys kind of know what to look out for now. Yep. Uh, lots of people have their brand they stick to, and they don't go off. You know, they they find a good brand that works for their foot. So the thing with shoes is there's not one brand that works great for everybody because everybody has different feet. Some people need a special shoe or a special a special insert, but um, there's no like Reeboks or Amazing or is there, like Brooks. It's kind of different depending on the person. Um, yeah. So if you find a good brand, you know, stick with it. There's nothing wrong with that. Just the major thing is make sure you can feel the ground enough, and also you're keeping an eye on your tread, but it's not wearing you down too much. And then flat-footed people. I'll write you down with the sketch. Okay. I wear Sachs and Clark stuff like that. Oh yeah, SAS. Sachs is really good. I live in Crocs. Okay. Okay. Well, I, I like the ones with the strap. You wear it with the strap or without yeah. the strap. Yeah. Clark's yeah. are really good. Yeah. They don't make them yeah. on size. That, that's my problem. A lot of good shoes. Yeah. 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 I have really no judgment. Nah. No. Uh, like, uh, they were 13 you know. or 12. They were made with a lot of them. Good <laughs> <laughs> oh, size. <laughs> Yeah, I can wear a mini sneaker. What do we do? I'm real fashionable. Yeah, that's nice. When I've got shoes out the back. All right, do we have anything else? Nope. Okay. Um, oh, there it is. Did, did everyone sign up for the pharmacy reviews that wanted to? Anyone else? Did we all sign up for what? The pharmacy reviews, the medication reviews? No, I don't think so. Okay. Thank you. All right. Okay, perfect. So that is all for today. Okay. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. See you next week. You hang on to that. Okay. And uh, yeah, don't forget your homework and your exercises. Yep. And bring those medications with you next week or any questions you have. Supplements too. If you have any supplements. Hey, done. Hey, I got a boom. I started having trouble with my body. What's up, Chuck? We can check all the day's exercise. Yeah, that's a good point. We can check all the day's exercise. No, I don't remember. I don't remember. We have water. Yeah, I'm going to go. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> <laughs>